praise the Lord, everybody. The Bible says, let everything have breath. Praise the Lord. And if you are breathing amidst all that's going on, that's a reason to praise our God. God is good, not some of the time, but all the time. Our God is good. Even with racism rising, even with COVID going on, our God is so good. Good morning, Bethany. I'm so grateful for you to join us on this morning. So this is a great time in worship to go ahead and give the Lord a praise. Send up a like, send up a love, share it, start a watch party, call somebody, tell them, come praise the Lord with me. And if you ain't got nobody, I know three people you can tell, me, myself, and I, because God is great and he deserves a great praise. Join us in worship on this morning. Join us this morning in sending another great hymn of the church. We're marching to Zion, that beautiful city of God. Come we that love the Lord, and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord. And thus surround the throne. Let those who refuse to sing, who never know our God, but children of the heavenly king, but children of the heavenly king, may speak their joys abroad, may speak their joys abroad. Come on, just say, we're my Songs abound, and every tear be dry. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground. We're marching through to bear worlds on high. Come on, keep joining that. We are marching, we are marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We are marching, we are marching upward to Zion. That Come on, one last time all over. We are marching, we are marching to Zion. That beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Zion. Oh, we're marching upward to Zion, that beautiful city of God. Come on, give the Lord some praise. Good morning, Bethany, and happy Father's Day to all the fathers out here today. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the giver of every good and perfect gift, it is once and again, Heavenly Father, that we come before you this morning, Father God, just to say thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your loving kindness. Oh God, our Father, we just bless your marvelous name on today. Oh God, our Father, even right now, we just continue to ask and pray, oh God, that you would just cover us afresh with your precious blood from the crown of the head to the soles of our very feet. And even now, Heavenly Father, as we pray this Sunday, Father God, on Father's Day, we are praying, Father God, for all the men, black men in particular, Father God, across the country. We pray, oh, Father God, for our black men are endangered species, Father God. Between the prison system, street violence, the prison system, oh God, we are endangered, Father God. And we're asking and praying, oh God, that you would touch our hearts, our minds, open the windows of understanding that we might find our way back to you. Oh God, our Father, when we find our way back to you, Father God, things will get better. Things will get better in our homes. Things will get better in our communities. 
game, things will get better in our cities, things will get better in our states, and things will get better in this nation, O oh God. So even now, Heavenly Father, we continue to ask and pray that you would just cover black men across the nation. O oh God, our Father, we ask and pray, O oh God, that you would just continue to bless the man servant of the house, our pastor, Father God, the angel of the Lord of this church. We continue to ask, O oh God, that you would continue to keep the man away from the man of God. Continue to bless him, Father God, all that he puts his hands and heart to, Father God. Allow to you to find your favor in all that he does, O oh God. O oh God, our Father, let us not forget our women, O oh God. Even now, Father God, bless the mothers, Father God, our daughters, Father God, our sisters, our aunts, O oh God. Continue to cover them too, O oh God, from the crown of the head to the sole of their very feet. So God, our Father, even now, Father God, continue to cover this city afresh, O oh God. Continue, Father God, to protect everyone, Father God. We pray not just for our families, O oh God, but we're praying for families all across this city, O oh God. We need you like never before. We need you in a major way, O oh God. We need a renaissance, Father God, a revival of you across this country, O oh God. So even now, Heavenly Father, as we leave, as we begin to worship on this Sunday morning, Father God, allow your Holy Spirit to saturate this sanctuary, O oh God. Allow your spirit, Father God, to touch hearts and minds to open the windows of understanding that when we have left this place, Father God, we might have drawn closer to you, Father God, and we might have been strengthened in our inner man. It is in the mighty and master's name of Jesus Christ that we do pray our hearts and our souls. Says, Amen. Good morning, Bethany. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. I'll be reading out of Proverbs 20, verse 1 through 7. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is a brawler, and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. The wrath of a king is like the roaring of a lion. Whoever provokes him to anger sins against his own life. It is honorable for a man to stop striving, since any fool can start a quarrel. The lazy man will not plow because, win because of winter. He will beg during harvest and have nothing. Counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water, but a man who understands will draw it out. Most men will proclaim his own goodness, but who can find a faithful man? The righteous man walks in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. The hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord has made them both. Amen. We want to send out a happy Father's Day to all the fathers that are part of our ministry. Our announcements for the week are as follows. The Lord keeps on blessing Bethany even in the middle of a pandemic. As a ministry, we are flourishing and not floundering. Please continue to participate in virtual worship each Sunday at 10 a.m. And make sure that you subscribe to our pages on YouTube and even to our Facebook, and be sure to share with someone. For our children ages 3 to 12, we are encouraging you to join Children's Church that takes place every Sunday at 1115. Today, it is on Zoom, and they're going through the Heroes of the Bible series. Last week, the young people talked about Jonah. This week, they'll be doing a special activity for Father's Day. Please make sure you email BBC youthandyoungadults at gmail.com if you have any questions or need the Zoom contact information. Matter of fact, instead of doing it later, why don't you go ahead and do that right now? Here at Bethany, we are trying to be the hands and the feet of Jesus, touching all those who are in need in our community. For that very reason, the food pantry is open every Sunday from 11 a.m. to 12 noon while we have supplies that last. If you know anybody who is in need, and we mean anybody, please have them to call the church at 410-354-6890. All they have to do is to pull in the parking lot, call the church, and the food will be brought out to them. We want to make sure that we can help any person who is in need in this trying time. Unfortunately for all my fathers this year, there will be no donuts for dads, but I think we've been home long enough, so we might not need those donuts. However, the new members ministry does want to wish a happy Father's Day to each and every one of us. The reality of it is, if you want to be a strong Christian, you have to be doing a lot of praying. And here at Bethany, we are praying five times a week, and we've even added an extra slot with six times with our seniors meeting at 12 noon on Monday. Make sure that you're joining those prayer calls 
at 12 noon on Monday, Monday evening, and in the mornings, Tuesday through Friday. Of course, that number is 515-603-4923. The access code is 222-654-POUND. We want to make sure that everybody is strong in Christ. So that means we should be praying together family. As the summer continues, we are going to keep up with our Wednesday in the Word that takes place every Wednesday at 630 with our pastor. Pastor has been blessing us. So we want to make sure that you're a part of that. Every Wednesday at 630, you can join us at Facebook or on the prayer line that was just given. For our women, the next Women of Prayer, Power, and Purpose activity is scheduled for Friday, July 10th. So make sure you mark your calendars down, ladies. More details will come forth about this activity that will either be virtually or maybe hosted on the church parking lot. But last but not least, make sure you're sharing all of us on all of your social media platforms. We want to make sure that people understand that we are still doing the work of Christ even while though the building may be closed, the church is wide open. So make sure that you are sharing us on Facebook. Make sure you're going and visiting the Instagram. Make sure you're visiting us on YouTube. We want to make sure that we are touching as many people as we can. As we move further in worship, we want to give a special Father's Day tribute. And then followed by that, there will be a selection from the praise team. And then we cannot wait to hear the preach word from none other, our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Thurman Michael James Sr. Father also makes sure, makes sure that you can be the best person that you can be and to grow up and learn how to respect people. A father is also there for you even in the dark times when you need help. A father is also a very special person to you because they can always help you grow. Dads are very special in a child's life when depending on what they want to do with the child and depending on what they do for a living. Um, they help out the child a lot. Like, for an example, like teaching them how to ride bikes and um, also teaching them how to fix things. Also teaching how to help people out when they need it. And I think that dads are very special child times. Like, because of what they do. Dads are important because they love us, they take care of us, they're in our family, they wrestle with us, and they and they have fun with they're us. They're special because they help, they care, they're, they help you with cooking, learning, and building, and they help you with a lot of new things that you don't know how to do. And they also help you with your chores or schoolwork. They also help you with anything you don't know how to do. And they also help you do, they also help you do anything you need help with. To all of the fathers out there, you have been loving, kind, and protective. Thank you again for all of your hard work. You deserve this day. Happy Father's Day! Thank you, Daddy, for everything you do for me and Leah. And God, and thank you, God, for blessing us with an amazing father. Okay, thank you to all the dads, especially my dad. Dad, I love my dad so much. Thank you for being there while we're growing up. Thank you for being there for showing us the way. And thank you for being there for showing us how to be a man. Thank you for being there while we're taking those steps in the manhood. And 
thank you for being there, for showing us how to fix things and make things. Thank you for being there, for showing us the way and how to take care of the family. Thank you for being there. And I would also like to say thank you to my father, Charles Wilson, because he's always helping people out and he's always there when you need him. And whenever you ask him for something, he never says no. He's always getting his jobs done. I would like to say thank you to my father and thank you for other fathers all around the world for showing us how to be good people. Thank you to all the fathers and happy fathers there. You take care of your children, you work hard to make a way for them. When you come home, you get a big hug from your children and they are so excited to see you. You love, you make your children happy when they feel down. You love to play. You teach them great new things and how to be productive as adults. You love them and you show up by your actions. Thank you, happy Father's Day and thank you to my dad, Jesse James. He's an awesome dad and I love him so much. Thank you to all the fathers and happy Father's Day. Oh God, my daddy's a superhero. Happy Father's Day. My life was torn beyond repair. Felt so alone. See no one. Yeah. No way.
Mother's Day and all the fathers figure. On this Sunday, I want to continue in my series, Flourishing and Not Floundering. Today I want to preach on the sermonic theme, Flourishing in Spite of. This is a bit different because I'm using six different pericopes or six different scriptures. There are six different persons, six different places, six different predicament that we will focus on today. All of these people use the same principle in getting their needs met, their problems solved, in order to help them flourish and not flounder. One was healed, one received bread, another received justice, another received salvation, one received eyesight, one child was restored. They all ended up better than they started out. They went from a deficit to a surplus. They could have all floundered, um, but rather they all flourished. The woman could have remained sick. The man could have remained breadless. The woman could have remained without justice. Bartimaeus could remain blind. The child could have remained demon possessed. And Zacchaeus could have remained without salvation. They are three men and three different women. I wrote this sermon not with computer or pencil and pen, but I wrote this one in my head while driving home from South Carolina. I know these texts by heart, and as I thought them through in my mind, I saw a common thread that ran through these six different pericopes. You are familiar with Matthew 9, the woman with an issue of blood. You are familiar with Matthew 15, the Syrophoenician woman. You are familiar with Luke 11, the man without bread. You are familiar with Luke 18, the woman who needed justice. You are familiar with Luke 19, the man who was seeking salvation. Um, you are familiar with Mark 10, the man who was blind. Three principles help them to flourish and not flounder. And these same principles, I am fully convinced, will help you to get to wherever you're trying to get to, to overcome whatever you need to overcome, and to be successful and not be a failure. That, in other words, I'm saying that you can flourish and not flounder. Yeah. Number one, the thing I saw that was common in all of these different pericope was all of them ignored no. The woman with the issue of blood, the man who needed bread, the blind man, every one of them said, um, was said no to them. Initially, disciples said, send the Seraphonician woman away. Jesus didn't answer her initial request. The blind man was told to shut up. The woman with the issue of blood for 12 years grew worse and not better. She received all kinds of no. She had spent all that she had. The unjust judge ignored the woman, for the text said he did not fear the woman, nor did he fear God. Yeah. Zacchaeus, short of statue, meant a no for him. And the man who wanted bread was told to go away. You have to learn how to handle your no's because your no's are a part of the landscape of living. Yeah. There's a man by the name of Walt Disney who was told no 302 times by banks um, and now 116 million people go to visit Disney to see the little mouse. Howard Schultz was told no 242 times by bank and now there's a Starbucks everywhere you live. Steven Spielberg was rejected by UCLA and USC School for Fume, and now he owns DreamWorks, which is worth over a billion dollars, and he makes more movies than almost anybody we know. The world's greatest basketball player, you know as Michael Jordan, but he was cut. Um, and um, if you're going to make it in this life, you're gonna have to be able to overcome no. Um, tennis champion Venus and Serena Williams, they did not have the right color, 
but in spite of that, they became the winningest um, sisters in the history of tennis. Yeah. Tiger Woods' skin color didn't allow him to be admitted to some golf courses unless he was there as a caddy. And now he is the greatest person in the world to ever have picked up a golf club. And of course there is Barack Hussein Obama, who had the wrong name, the wrong skin color, but wrote a book called The Audacity of Hope and wrote it all the way to the White House. Yeah. You're going to have to learn how to get past the no's in your life. Yeah. Every one of them meant no, but they did not let no stop them. They kept on knocking until they found the yes. But not only do you have to overcome and ignore no's, you have to ignore people in sensitivity. Yeah. The disciples were insensitive to the plight of this woman's child. I mean, the woman's child was demon possessed and you would have expect them to have some level of care, but I guess they felt like it's her child, not our child. And so they said, send her away. Jesus seemed to be insensitive because when she talked to Jesus, he did not answer her a word. The crowd was insensitive to Zacchaeus' shortness. People were insensitive to Barton Mayer's blindness. The crowd was insensitive to the woman with an issue of blood. It says, that's her issue, not my issue. The judge was insensitive to, to the woman's desire for ju judgment. In recent times, we have seen insensitivity of the dominant society. Yeah. Colin Kaepernick took a knee, yeah. and Drew Brees had the audacity to make Kaepernick taking a knee about the flag rather than about police brutality, which has taken the lives of countless brown and black people. Yeah. Um, they were insensitive because Mama Diallo did not belong to them. Kendra Jane did not belong to them. Eric Gardner was not their brother or their son, their father. Sean Bell, Michael Brown, Tavon Martin, Walter Scott, the little baby Tamir Rice, Sandra Brand, Freddie Gray, and more recently, um, we add Breonna Taylor, Audrey, um, Ahmaud Arbery, and George Floyd and Rashad Brooks. In spite of what people say, we are anything but non-patriotic. And we fought in every war that these, this country has ever had. So when they tried to make it about the flag, and Drew Brees had the nerve to say that when the national anthem is played, he thinks about his grandfather who served in the war. Well, our grandfathers and forefathers served in the war. Yeah. We fought in every war. We fought in the American Revolutionary War in 1775. We fought in the World War of 1812. We fought in the Mexican-American War in 1846. We fought in the Civil War in 1861. We fought in the Spanish-American War in 1898. We fought in World War I in 1917. Fought in World War II in 1939. We fought in the Korean War in 1950. Yeah. We fought in the Bay of Pigs in 1961. Yeah. We fought in Vietnam. We fought in the Gulf War. We fought um, um, in Iraq. And we fought in Afghanistan. So I understand how you feel as the dominant society, um, having a tear in your eye doing the playing of the national anthem. Yeah. I know it gets you all charged up. But I must say that it doesn't charge me up and the persons who have my hue and my skin color because the flag has been a lot kinder to you, Drew Brees, yeah. and the folk who look like you. Yeah. It hasn't been as kind to black and brown people. Um, under that same flag, they blew up the black Wall Street called yeah. Oklahoma. Yeah. Under that same flag, same flag, they destroyed the whole town of Rosewood in Florida and killed everybody. Under that same flag, we have what's known as Bloody Sunday on the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Under that same flag, they killed Malcolm, they killed Markin, they killed Mega Evers. We were lynched and castrated under the same flag. Yeah. Women were raped and breeded. Our women raped and breeded under the same flag. They stole our labor and never paid for it. Yeah. 
We were cut off from land and language, forbidden to learn, considered three-fifths of a human being, uh -huh. and denied voting rights, yeah. endured Jim Crow and black codes. Drugs and guns were dropped in our community under that same flag that give you a warm and cozy feeling. And now we are living with the prison industrial complex. We are still dealing with redlining. Our property values are not as valued as much as yours because of the color of our skin. Yeah. We are dealing with predatory lending. Um, the flag is still building prison for our children as opposed to building school. Yeah. So pardon me if I don't have a warm, fuzzy feeling about the national anthem. If you want me to have a warm, fuzzy feeling and to have a tear in my eye, then sing, lift every voice and sing. Yeah. Till earth and heaven ring, ring yeah. with the harmony of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening sky. Let it resound loud as the roaring sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past have taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the presence had brought us facing the rising sun of our new day begun. Let us march on till victory is won. Stony the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod, felt in the day when hope unborn was died, had died. Yet with a steady beat, have not our weary feet come to the place for which our father sighed. We have come over the ways that with tears have been watered. Yeah. We have come treading our path through the blood and the slaughter, out of the glooming past till at last we stand where the white gleam of the bright star is cast. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way, thou who is by thy might, yeah. let us into the light, keep us forever yeah. in that path we pray. We pray lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee. Yeah. Lest our heart drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. Shadowed beneath thy hand, may we forever stand true to our God and true to our native land. Yeah. Now, when you sing that one, I get a warm and fuzzy feeling. I get a tear in my eye. If you sing, I've seen the lightning flash and heard the thunder roar, felt sin breakers scratching trying to conquer my soul, but he promised never to leave me alone. Yes, and so you have to understand that others are insensitive because they haven't been through what you have been through. Yeah. Not only do you have to get past people being insensitive to your plight, but then you have to have insight that's stronger than insult. Yeah. Jesus called the woman a dog, but she knew he had what he wanted. Um, what she needed. Um, Bartimaeus, they told him to shut up. Um, the, the people who could see told him to shut up while they could see, but he was blind. But Bartimaeus hollered the more. Yeah. And when something is bothering you, don't let nobody tell you to shut up. You are going to holler until you get your breakthrough. The woman with the issue of blood said, I might have to deal with some stuff. They might step on me. They may talk on me. But I know if I just touch the hem of his garment, yeah. I'm going to be made whole. Yeah. You got to have insight stronger than inst um, insult. Zach Kears, they called him a chief sinner. Yeah. But Zach Kears didn't um, care because Jesus said, Zach Kears, come down out of that tree because I'm going home with you. Yeah. And Zach Kears and his whole family end up saved. The man kept knocking on the door, even though his friend didn't want to open up the door. But the man knew what he needed was on the other side of the door. He knew that the bread he needed was on the other side. The woman kept going back to court, worrying the judge, even though she knew the judge didn't care nothing about her. She kept showing up. And the judge said, though I fear not God nor this woman, except she worry me to death, let me avenge her of her adversary. This woman had insight to change the heart of an unjust judge. Our foreparents suffered tremendous insults and indignity, but their insight was stronger than insult. They sat at lunch counters where people swerved ketchup on them and mustard on them and threw all kinds of stuff 
um, on them, but their insight was they suffered yesterday so we can sit anywhere we want to sit today. They marched in Birmingham because they wanted them to sit on the back of the bus. And now today, because of their insight, we're not just sitting on the front of the bus. We are driving the bus. Places where they didn't want us, we're now there. Our parents were called girls. Our fathers were called boys. But they didn't stop because they knew they had mouths to feed. Our people dealt with the bloody Sunday, but now we have brighter Sundays because their insight was stronger than their insult. Well, there's one other folk, um, person I want to talk about. His name is Jesus. Um, he was insulted, but he held on to his insight. He was betrayed by Judas, denied by Peter, doubted by Thomas, deserted by the disciples. Um, what an insult. He was whipped and spat upon, mocked and insulted. But Jesus' insult would not, insight would not let him quit. Because I read he was wounded for our transgression and he was bruised for our iniquity. And with his stripes, we are healed. Um, he was insulted while he was on the cross. They said, if you really be the cross, come down. If you really be the Christ, come down. The thief on one side um, railed on him. Passerbys railed on him. But he never came down. In spite of what he was facing, he kept his insight, understanding that he had to die in order to save you and I. And so I'm arguing today that you can get from your no to your yes. You can get from being insensitive people until you have the insight to understand it doesn't matter what I have to go through. It's all going to be worth it. If you are going through some stuff right now, you're not the first person to go through some stuff. You're not the first person to be talked about. You're not the first person to hear the word no. You're not the first person to be insulted, but you got to stick and hold on to your conviction. I believe that no matter how many times I go down, I still going to get back up. I believe no matter how many doors are closed, that there is a door that God will open that no man can shut. And God will shut doors that no man can open. You have to understand that God will let you flourish in the middle of disasters where other folk are going under. God will take us over. And so these six people, every one of them, everything turned out better for them than it started out. I'm talking to somebody today. Things may not be going right now, right, right now, but you got to believe that there is a bright side somewhere. You've got to believe that weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. You've got to hold on and hang in there because help is on the way. And if God be for you, who can be against us? I am persuaded that God is stronger than racism. I am destroyed that God is stronger than 45 in the White House. They can do all they want to do, but I know how to ignore folk. I know how to stand my ground and wait until my change comes. That's what Job said. I'm going to wait until my change comes. I'm going to wait until he bless me. And I think God is in the blessing business. Do you want to be blessed today? Then you got to hang in there. You got to hold on. You cannot give up. You got to learn from these six people. To ignore no. To not be so sensitive about their insensitivity. And your insight must always be stronger yeah. than the insults. Yeah, yeah. And when you do that, it doesn't matter who you are, you'll be able to make it. Muggsy Bowles, five feet nothing, played in the NBA like he was a giant because he didn't listen to what folks said couldn't be done. Golden State Warriors, they said, a jump shot shooting team could never win a championship. But they won three and they went to five in a row. You've got to keep your insight stronger than insult. Yeah. Let the hell hounds bark. Let the naysayers talk. Yeah. But you stay right there. Yeah. Yeah. That woman called the dog did not move. And Jesus ended up saying your faith has made your daughter whole. She was a foreigner. Said, my daughter has a demon. And she said, I'm going to stay here until that demon is cast out. And I know you can do it. 
It doesn't matter what they say. I know you can do it. And I'm here to tell you, Jesus can do anything but fail. He can make you to flourish in a situation where most people would flounder. It might start out bad, but it's not how you start. Yeah. It is how you finish. Yeah. And the last record I have of Jesus is he stepped up on resurrection morning and said, I've got all power. Oh. I've got the key to death, hell, and the grave. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. But he had to go through some stuff to say, I got all power. Yeah. And the Bible says that there's going to come a day mm. when every knee yes, shall bow and call him Lord of Lord. So on that day, all hail yes. the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth a royal diadem and crown him Lord of Lord. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we no longer began to sing his praise than when we first begun. Six people, six pericope, six different places. All of them start out at a deficit, but all of them end up as a plus. They started down, but they ended up up. And they all had to ignore no, get past people being insensitive to their plight. Yes. And they had to have insight stronger than insult. So you sitting at home, ready to fold up your tent, don't fold up your tent, show up again. Yeah. And say, I'm not gonna let you run me out, I'm gonna show up. Yeah. I'm gonna show up until you take notice of who I am. They missed the knee of Colin Kaepernick, mm. and they had to endure the knee of George Floyd. And they're marching all over the world, mm. and they're wishing that they had heeded to the first knee. But if you hang in there, God will turn it around. And I believe it's turning around. I can see the breaking of day. Things are going my way. He's turning it around for me. Amen. You take your time and you read the story in Matthew 9 and Matthew 15. Luke 11, Luke 18, Luke 19, and Mark 10. And you will see those principles. If they worked for them, they will work for you. I want to extend to you an opportunity to give your life to Christ. Christ held on to the insight that if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. He understood he had to go through some stuff, but he said that I am the lamb crucified from the foundation of the world. And because he died on Calvary and got up on Resurrection Sunday, he made it possible for Lottie Dottie and everybody to be saved. And so all you have to do is accept Christ as your personal savior. The Bible is very, very clear that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible is very, very clear said the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so right where you are today, I want you to pray this prayer with me using your words, using my words and your faith. Lord, I am a sinner. I have sinned by word, by thought, and by deed. I've done some bad things. But today, God, I ask you to save me right now. Forgive me for my sins and cover me with the blood of the Lamb. Save me right now in the name of Jesus. If you prayed that prayer and met that prayer, your name is now written in the Lamb's Book of Life. 
And not only are you saved, but now you have the principles and the rest and the recipe for being able to do anything you set your mind to. You can overcome anything that you are dealing with. And then rather than floundering, God will let you flourish when you're at the end of your rope, if you know how to hang in there and hold on. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. And those of you who have decided that you want to give your life to Christ, call our lines. There will be someone there to take your message and hook you up with this branch of Zion if you want to be a part of it. But if you don't want to be a part of this one and you listen to us somewhere out of the country, you're listening to us in some other state, we will direct you. We know somebody near where you are who's preaching the gospel, who's teaching the word of God to build you and strengthen you. God bless you. Family, it's now time to lift up our tithes, our offering, our love gifts, our sacrificial pledges. Those of you who are listening who may not be a member of this ministry and you want to sow into good ground, we are good ground. We are about a great work in the kingdom of God. And if you seed it into the kingdom of God, it may leave your hand, but it can never leave your life. God will bless you in a multiplicity of ways. So many ways God can bless you. Our blessings are not coincidence, they are divine providence. It's not by luck, it's by the hand of God. He says, bring the tides into the house and see them all open up windows and pour you out blessings you don't have room enough to receive. I often tell people, if you hang with God, you will see a revolutional change in one generation. In one generation, he'll turn your whole family around if you hook up with God and trust him. Honor him with the tithes and the offering. God doesn't need our money to run the universe. The sun will still come up, the moon will still come up, the stars will still shine, the birds will sing, the bees will buzz, the grass will turn green, the flowers will bloom. But we need to sow into the kingdom of God so birds will sing in our lives and flowers will bloom in our lives. Because the Bible is very, very clear. Whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. Don't get upset with your neighbor because your neighbor garden looks better than you. Yours is just that they've put more work in than you. And so honor God with your tithes and your offering. Let's bless those gifts. You can give in several ways. You can mail to the church. You can drop by the church and put it in the mail slot. You can give electronically by Giblify, or you can go to our homepage, BBC Baltimore, hit the words donate and contribute that way. Let's bless those gifts. Thank you, God, that you love cheerful givers. And there are cheerful givers that are giving. Now, thank you, God, that my job is to make the acts. And then once people have made the release, thank you that you will bless them where they need blessing the most. We thank you for these gifts. Amen and amen. Benediction is the final blessing over your life. And so God bless you, you and you, wherever you may be right now. God bless you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. God bless you that every organ function as it should that with this COVID virus going around, that you are covered by the blood of Jesus, protected by the angels of God. God bless you to lay down and sleep and have rest of mind and body. And now may the grace of God, the sweet, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide henceforth now and forevermore. All of God's people said amen and amen.
No. Oh. 